What's up guys, this is Merc Music, and the Modern Warfare 2 beta is looking amazing so far. They recently dropped this huge announcement that shows off the beta rewards, and there's a lot of other really useful information that I'm going to cover in this video, along with some stuff that came out about SM2. I will be starting this video with the Modern Warfare 2 beta news, but if you guys want to skip ahead to the SM2 stuff, I'll have timestamps in the description so you can do that. So yeah, if you guys are hyped for the Modern Warfare 2 beta and SM2, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this, and let's get into it. So on Call of Duty's website, they announced some more information about the Call of Duty Next event, which is going to be on September 15th. They gave us some more information about preloading the beta and also some rewards that you get for playing the beta. This whole Call of Duty Next event is going to be on September 15th. It's going to start at 9.30 in the morning Pacific time, which is 12.30 Eastern time. And they're going to be showing off all kinds of new Call of Duty stuff that includes Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, the next iteration of Warzone, and also Warzone Mobile. And they kind of tease us here with some stuff on the website. It says that they're going to be showing off key innovations across the franchise, but the details are really in how they worded this. It says that it's going to be announced by developers and guest speakers from multiple Call of Duty studios. Now, obviously at this point, we know that there's like a billion studios working on this current Call of Duty game. But let's not completely write off the notion that there might actually be talk about other Call of Duty games. So far, we know that Infinity Ward is the lead developer for Modern Warfare 2, but that's not to say that they might not have Treyarch here, talking about whatever they might have in store for 2023. Next up, it says that more than 150 of your favorite streamers will be in attendance, ready to squat up, drop in, and play. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be one of those people, but I, it's all good. I'm more than happy to just stay at home and play the beta like everyone else and go for quad feeds and stuff like that. But what's really interesting to me is this specific number, 150 streamers. My intuition is telling me that there's probably going to be some kind of big Warzone 2 tournament with all of these different Call of Duty streamers. It is totally possible that they could just be playing the exact same Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer beta that all of us are going to play this weekend, at least if you're on PlayStation. But I don't know, man. I mean, if you really focus on how they've worded this, it kind of looks like it's going to be 150 streamers all playing in a Warzone 2 tournament. Because it doesn't say specifically that they're going to be playing the Modern Warfare 2 beta or even just Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. So it's open to interpretation. And there's really no need to say specific specifically 150 people. If these streamers or content creators were just going to be playing the multiplayer, then they wouldn't have had to give a specific number. But yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens on Thursday. It also says here that key details about the Modern Warfare 2 open beta will be shared as well as redacted information and additional surprises. Yeah, they're definitely starting to lead us on here with the whole redacted information thing and that there's going to be surprises at this event too. You know, if these 150 streamers are not playing Warzone 2, they could end up playing the DMZ mode. Again, in this blog post, they're officially mentioning Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, Call of Duty War Warzone and Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And there has been tons of speculation about the DMZ mode, so they could be playing this as well. Again, this event is going to be happening September 15th at 9.30 in the morning Pacific time, and I'm definitely planning to cover this because I can't wait to see what they're going to be showing off. As we scroll down, it says that you can watch the event on Twitch or YouTube. It says here that there's going to be a variety of expert hosts as well as a central hub of live feeds from all of the streamers, so you're always kept at the core of the action. Or you can drop in on your favorite streamers and watch the event from their perspective. This right here leads me to believe that it's 100% going to be some kind of tournament, whether it's like Warzone 2 or the DMZ mode. And if you're watching the Call of Duty Next event from the official Call of Duty Twitch or YouTube channel, you're going to be watching like a version of it that probably has some perspective switching and they're going to have hosts, you know, commentating over it. That's what I'm gathering from all this so far. And now it says here, ready for the open beta? Then expect to receive an impressive collection of in-game rewards for participating in the open beta. As far as it goes for that collection being impressive, <laughs> you guys will see really soon. So as far as it goes for the Modern Warfare 2 beta for PlayStation, it's going to start on Friday, but you can preload the game on Wednesday starting at 10 a.m. Pacific. Pacific time. So yeah, if you're on PS4 or PS5 and you've pre-ordered the game, you can pre-download the game on the 14th, which gives you two days to kind of get ready. Early access for the Modern Warfare 2 beta is going to be on the 16th and 17th, and then from the 18th to the 20th, it's going to be open for everyone on PlayStation. Same thing goes for the second weekend of the beta, but that's going to be for all platforms. You're able to earn the biggest collection of free beta rewards ever in Call of Duty history. A total of 10 different reward items, including two weapon blueprints and an operator skin, can be earned throughout one or both beta weekends. These items can be equipped in the beta as soon as you unlock them, and they are only available to unlock during the beta itself. So here's the rewards for the first weekends. It looks like the max level cap you can hit is 15. If you make it to level two, you get an animated emblem. At level four, you get a weapon charm. You get an animated player card for level six. You get a sticker at level 10. And then finally at level 15, you get a weapon blueprint for what looks like a machine pistol. I did see some stuff on Twitter about how people are saying this looks like the L car from Black Ops 2, but I'm sure you guys will tell me exactly what this pistol is because I always get this stuff wrong. And yeah, for the second weekend of the beta, it looks like the level cap is going to be 30. If you make it to level 18, you get the operator skin called Collision. Level 19, it looks like you get another player card, and then 21, you get a sticker. For level 26, you get a vehicle skin, and then finally, at level 30, you get a weapon blueprint for what looks like a Scar L. We got some more Modern Warfare 2 art right here. We got some random lady, some random dude, and obviously ghost in the middle. But yeah, that's essentially all the news from the Call of Duty blog. One thing that is pretty interesting is that all of this stuff that you unlock playing the beta will be usable in the full game. There's also this little teaser video that shows off some icons and stuff like that. Charlie Intel kind of breaks it down. Here's a little screenshot from the video. It kind of looks like we have a scavenger perk right here, along with overkill. This kind of looks like Spotter, 
of this looks like high alert but yeah that's pretty much it for the modern warfare 2 beta news so far let's move on to sm2 so yeah let's dive into this a couple days ago sm2 dropped a new blog called core and i believe the reason they called it this is because there are a lot of core changes coming to the game all right so let's go over this it says out with clients in with the core since our last dev blog from april our primary focus went into refactoring our engine code base after over a year of tweaking and patching the engine lots of things have been scrapped or redone which ultimately led to unused and obsolete code or previously implemented features that could use more polish and optimization this is why we decided to move from our client code base to a new and shiny one that we named core so essentially what happened before with the client system is that things were kind of disorganized you know you got like file names and everything out of place and with the core system they've kind of optimized it there's folders everything is kind of like neatly organized and that should be pretty huge because if they want to get this project done they're going to need things to be organized and not like all over the place and i know exactly how this feels from an editing standpoint like when your files are all like mismatched and all over the place it actually wastes a lot of time when it comes to editing so it's really good to kind of clean things up organize it and have folders all that good stuff so as a result of these changes sm2 is saying that the whole engine refactoring also helps to pinpoint some issues that they had if you guys are familiar with independent weapon field of view it was apparently causing them issues some in-game effects such as muzzle flashes or lasers were not being displayed correctly they were shown relative to the world's field of view rather than the weapons which resulted in these effects being offset this only got worse as the world to weapon field of view difference increased they're saying that it might not be the end of the world for some people and for crying out loud a very popular game that released in late 2021 has this problem to this very day they're talking about vanguard right because that wouldn't surprise me <laughs> but it says here as they commit to releasing the game in the best state that it can be having a pristine code base helps tremendously to fix these kinds of errors and work as efficiently as they can on them so yeah right here they have an example of the oni pistol from infinite warfare on afghan from modern warfare 2 as you can see the muzzle flash is like way off the guns they're right here and the muzzle flash is like way out there and even though at the end of the day this is just a tiny detail it's nice to hear that they want to actually fix it and kind of polish it compared to what we see with a game like vanguard another big issue that has been fixed with core is related to the menu system we will go through menus and how they really work further down in this article but we discovered a severe memory leak issue caused by the menus themselves due to the gargantuan changes that have been made to the ui we had to figure out a solution quite early on no less than 12 months back the old code base had already received a temporary fix to reduce the frequency of these memory leaks but they're saying now that they found a true permanent fix to the issue alongside the development of core so yeah so far it's sounding like a lot of back-end things have been fixed which is going to be huge for making sure that the game is running smoothly so just in case you guys didn't know sm2 is running on iw4 which is the modern warfare 2 engine and since the engine is only a 32-bit application it can only allocate and use four gigs of ram and hopefully you guys can understand that they cannot just scrap what they've done and move to a different engine it's not that easy so what they're doing instead is that they're optimizing everything for the four gigs of ram that they can use they've moved to a dynamic attachment system they're minimizing the assets usage dynamically loading and unloading components and then there's also texture streaming in a nutshell when they were preparing the gun game video that i actually covered in a previous video they noticed that there was some stuttering when you would get a promotion and move on to the next gun because again they want gun game to be really fun and unique and you'd have all kinds of different attachments on the guns when you get promoted so with this whole dynamic attachment system it's making it easier to load things in and from a technical standpoint they can now have more complex and advanced attachments like giving explosive tips to the crossbow the way that they had things working before is that the crossbow in the game would have essentially been launching throwing knives at people but now the crossbow is going to have proper explosive arrows that actually stick to walls and players with the whole delayed explosion kind of like black ops 1 and black ops 2. next up we have a pretty big section dedicated to controller support which i'm sure you guys are going to want to hear about the refactoring of the code base also brought forth a complete rework of the controller code on release sm2 will support xbox 360 and xbox one controllers as well as dualshock 4 and dualsense models all of these devices will be supported natively without the use of third-party programs but of course you're still going to need bluetooth connectivity if you're not wiring it directly to your pc they also said here talking about playstation controllers we've taken advantage of their light bar and it will now glow accordingly to the main menu color scheme and will fade from green to red depending on your health in game that is pretty sick and i like all of these little details that they're adding into the game the aim assist code has received an overhaul too and has been redone in a way that makes it feel more responsive and natural as well as being able to control settings per individual weapon this is particularly useful from a balance perspective as it allows us to tweak certain weapons more in depth most tweaks however are based on the weapons category rather than the weapon itself so aim assist won't be disorienting from one weapon to another still being able to make very minor adjustments for weapon balancing is a big step in the right direction so it's kind of sounding like you can tweak aim assist based off of the weapon you're using i mean maybe you like to snipe and you don't want to have aim assist you can potentially turn that off or if you like to have aim assist on your smgs and assault rifles then by all means turn it on it says here another big feature of controller support is menu navigation one thing that sounds really nice too is that they wrote 900 lines of engine code to support being able to navigate the menus with just a controller that's actually really nice i mean if you're going to be playing the game with a controller you want to be able to do everything with a controller that includes navigating menus and changing settings it does say here as a minor side note if you're the type of person to have both an xbox and playstation controller set up on your computer both turned on at the same time the xbox model will take priority this is not a biased choice it's just that the x input api will 
will be called first in the game's code. The reason we went diving into controller support code again was to ensure that the game is as easy and straightforward as possible for controller players. Since SM2 is a PC game only, it's only right to make it friendly to the controller users who might be too afraid <laughs> to cross the gap. I wouldn't say I'm afraid, I'm just better with a controller, but hey. But they say here that they especially wanted to help out the PlayStation controller users because it can be notoriously painful to set up, even more so on modern games. Ultimately, the objective is to be able to start the game, grab your favorite controller, and be able to use it as your sole source of input from start to finish without having to deal with anything else being even remotely technical. So yeah, I think this is actually a huge and really nice quality of life improvement for the game. We got some really nice unique customization as well. You'll be able to navigate menus with just a controller. You don't have to switch back to mouse and keyboard, and it's just going to make it overall a lot easier for controller players. This next section is going to cover image streaming. Essentially, SM2 is going to use way more textures than Modern Warfare 2s, and some people, including present company, are going to be playing at a higher resolution like 4K. So over time, it's going to get really difficult to actually load everything at once. One of the current issues that they're facing is that there's just so many textures and so many things going on that once you launch the game and it's starting to cache things, the game is essentially just running out of memory and it crashes. Because again, IW4 can only allocate 4 gigs of RAM. So it says here that they worked on streaming the textures over time instead of loading them all at once. Basically, texture streaming functions the exact opposite way as the original game. So it says when the game starts loading zones that contain materials, the game preloads the material to know which images it will eventually need. Once the game needs to render an image on screen from a material that's already been loaded, it fetches it so it can be shown properly. When an image stops being used, it will be freed from the memory, but the material remains in case the game needs to reuse it later. For example, when a weapon stops being used during a match, but it might be used again at any moment. When a zone is unloaded because it isn't used anymore, for example, a map zone after a match has ended, so are the materials associated with it. So there's no need to keep materials from a map that's not being played anymore. They have this video right here that kind of explains how the texture streaming works. This is definitely a pretty big technical feat for the team, and hopefully it doesn't cause too many issues later down the road. <laughs> what the stair is doing. It wouldn't be appropriate to keep some of the annoying phenomenons that the engine comes up with, and here's one that most PC players have encountered at some point, especially those running with high FPS, the stuttery stairs collision, which you can see here in this video. So essentially what they're saying here is that since the games typically would cap at 60 FPS, you wouldn't have to worry about issues like this. But if you're running at a higher frame rate, or if you use things like time scale to slow down the game, it starts to become a pretty big issue. And I'm pretty sure the SM2 devs are going to be looking at this and trying to find a solution. There's also a section here that talks about akimbo weapons. In a nutshell, the way things used to work in Modern Warfare 2 is that the left hand weapon was essentially just a clone of the right hand weapon. They more or less copied and pasted the animations from the right hand weapon, and they also just used the exact same ammo pool instead of being independent. And as you can see here in SM2, the left hand weapons for akimbo are also going to have their own animations. This is also a nice little detail that they're going to have, but when you go to launch the game for the first time, it's going to just go to your default display settings. So when the game launches for the first time, it's not going to be in like 360p or 480p. The game's going to launch at your PC's native resolution. Next up, there's some pretty big changes to the arsenal in SM2. And I'll go pretty quickly through this so that way you guys can know which weapons are being switched out for what. The MWR MP5 has been switched back to the Modern Warfare 3 version. The MW2 Campaign Remastered M14 is now the Modern Warfare 3 MK14. The Black Ops 2 MK48 has been replaced with the Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered L86 LSW. The Black Ops 3 CUDA has been replaced by the Black Ops 2 Peacekeeper. The Black Ops 3 PPSH now has a drum mag by default. The BO3 Dracon has been replaced by the BO4 Vendetta. The Black Ops 3 Galil got its Tritium site removed. The COD Online Desert Eagle has been switched to the Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered version. The COD Online G37H has been changed to the World War II Gewehr 43. The COD Online Type 95 has been swapped with the MW3 counterpart. The COD Online L11 now uses the ghost animations and models. The Black Ops 1 Stakeout has been replaced by the Black Ops 4 Zombies Trench Gun. And lastly, we have the Advanced Warfare M1 Garand being swapped with the Infinite Warfare counterpart. There's breakdowns for exactly why they made these changes, but typically it has to do with aesthetic purposes, or sometimes it has to do with how much memory can be allotted to the game. Something else that's been improved upon is the sprinting animations for the different weapons. Essentially, there were some bad looking sprint animations for different guns, and they just kind of improved upon them. Okay, so there's no more view model bobbing. Jumping, landing, and going prone has proper view model animations. Sprinting while in the air will slow down the sprint animation until you're back on your feet. And crawling now has its very own animation as well, instead of just disappearing like in the original game. There's some unique animations for reloading as well, depending on what the weapon is. It says when reloading an empty weapon that uses rechambers, like a pump action shotgun or a bolt action rifle, the game would play a different reload animation for the first bullet or shell, and then continue with its usual reloading animation. So it looks like with SM2, they've actually added this feature back, which will allow for some more unique looking animations. Another neat little thing is that when you're sprinting, if you have an empty weapon with an open chamber or empty chamber, you can now see that while you're sprinting. Looks like they also made some improvements to the bullet casings when they're ejected from the guns, and they really do look more 3D instead of like 2D. It looks like they've also simplified some weapon categories. They got rid of the marksman rifle category, but not the weapons themselves. And it looks like for the sake of simplifying things, some of those weapons are going to go into the attack rifles category, and then others that are stronger will go into the snipers category. It looks like the team is also trying to resolve some issues for people 
people who want to play in different aspect ratios. Like if you're playing at ultra wide or even at like four, three, there's going to be a lot of UI scaling and aspect ratio changes that have to be done in order to pull that off. And that's going to be pretty difficult. But so far, it sounds like it's something that they're working on. And lastly, they're also working on some in-game interface changes. The in-game health bar seems like a refined version of like the war zone health bar, where you can see four different sections of your health bar going down and then coming back up. So you kind of get a better idea of where your health is at, whether that's at like 75%, 50 or 25%. They also made some improvements to the weapon bar. It looks like they've made some improvements to the animations as well as visibility. The game also now has intro text when you're loading into maps like hard hat. And as you can see here, they also did some redesigns for the round ending kill cam. Overall, it kind of looks and sounds like they took some inspiration from Black Ops 1's kill cams where they kind of slow down towards the end. And SM2 is also going to have some default classes that you can choose from when you first play the game. And by the way, create a class is looking super clean so far. You can see the primary weapon with attachments, your secondary weapon with attachments, your melee weapon of choice, your lethal and tactical grenades, as well as your three perks. And last but not least, we have a section here for the loading screen. This is their loading screen for Rust for Modern Warfare 2, and it actually looks really good. Looks like they have some really nice shots of the map, some nice little animations with the SM2 logo. Everything just looks so clean and so nice for this game, and I cannot wait to play SM2. But with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video of me showing off some Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer beta news, along with some news about SM2 as well. I am definitely excited to play both games. I mean, the Modern Warfare 2 beta is going to be playable this week, and while I'm pretty sure SM2 is still going to be pretty far away, I cannot wait to play this game because it looks amazing so far. So with that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did and you're excited to play the Modern Warfare 2 beta or SM2, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later. Outcome. Thank you.